Aviation to me is a life. My complete life has been impacted by aviation, positively, and I think one of the greatest passions in the world, if you are lucky, is to be an aviator. I think the way I do things today, and my family can attest to this, they can see the streak of aviation across everything I do. I wanted to be an aviator. As a soldier, I ended up becoming an Air Force pilot after a space shuttle mission in 1985. When I came back from the US, I found that it was very difficult to fly in Saudi Arabia. So I ended up basically going back to the US or to Europe to enjoy the experience of flying. That's when the aviation, uh, Saudi Aviation Club idea was born in the 1990s. And now, also, now we have the Saudi Aviation Academy, which is now graduating pilots to go into all levels, all the way to airline pilots. When I am not flying for one reason or another, people around you, even my family, say, maybe you haven't flown for a while. At one point, I had my children wearing hats with wind socks on top of it when they're small. In our family, every child born have to fly the first time with me and while we're flying to come and sit with me in the cockpit. When I first started my aviation life, we were still flying uh, airplanes with gauges, uh, flying airplanes that are slower, not so sophisticated. I was very fortunate to also begin early life flying Learjets. I've also been fortunate to be a Gulfstream man all my life. And I now fly, we own the Gulfstream 550 and own the Learjet 24, which is my pride and joy, the last 24 made, and it is the most beautiful airplane, I think, in the universe. I think being an aviator is a, a ticket for you to be able to venture anywhere you want and to open the horizons, not just literally speaking, but figuratively speaking, and to have a perspective of life that I think you would never have doing anything else. Greetings from sunny Saudi Arabia. I would like first to thank you and send you my very deep gratitude for this recognition and this award. I would have very much liked to be with you in Los Angeles. It's one of my favorite parts of the world, Southern California. The more important part of the trip would have been to, to meet and greet so many of you that I have flown with, crisscrossed the skies with throughout the years and learned from. And those are the people that really deserve the recognition more than I do. This recognition is very much appreciated by myself, of course, and my whole family. And uh, I very much like to apologize for not being with you. This time of the year is a very heavy time for commitments in the Saudi government. And uh, I've tried my best to make that uh, very long trip back and forth in less than 24 hours. But when you have a boss that you can't say no to, and commitments that you really have to, uh, to attend, uh, then this becomes almost impossible. I do very much appreciate allowing me to send you these, these very short words. Uh, I could speak for an hour, but I'm not going to do that today. Uh, think of uh, coming next year, I hope, I'm going to plan it much, much earlier, and find the time for it. Really, the most important thing is to come and shake hands with everyone, Jerry and his team and the organization. I very much thank you all for uh, this, uh, this, uh, this tremendous honor. And I do want to extend an invitation for everyone to join us in Saudi towards the end of this year. Jerry will have the information soon in our uh, Sand and Fun event. It's a great event that we've hosted once in Saudi. Corona came and then we're going to host it again this year. And I hope you would look us up, uh, Sand and Fun, uh, Hangar Talks on the internet. But uh, this is really tremendous. I promise to be there next year. And thank you very much and God bless you all. <laughs> Again, thank you, Sultan. All of us wish you could be here tonight to receive your medallion, but we do understand the circumstances. <laughs>